Imagine this, you've been playing guitar for years, maybe even decades, but the progress stopped years ago. There's a good chance you're like me and you simply skipped over the basics. And if you could just find those few missing pieces, you could finally solve the puzzle. With any luck, this video will help you avoid making the same mistakes that I did. When I was a kid, I briefly took lessons from a classical guitarist. His name was Mr. Russo. I wasn't necessarily interested in playing classical music, and to this day, I've never owned a classical guitar. But I knew I wanted to do more than just imitate my heroes. Jimi Hendrix, Joe Satriani, Brian Setzer, Eric Clapton. These guys clearly knew something that I could not figure out on my own. They were up here, and I was down here. They knew the secrets of music and that's what I wanted to learn. But what I got out of those early guitar lessons was something very different. It was a lot of simple melodies that I was expected to play in time, in tune, with each note ringing out clearly. Mr. Russo had a heavy Italian accent and I couldn't always understand what he was saying. But whenever he said something really important, he would follow it up with, is this clear? I remember getting bored playing basic single note melodies. How was I ever supposed to play like Joe Satriani? If I kept playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Red River Valley, Mr. Russo showed me how to play part of Asturias by the Spanish composer Isaac Albanese. It was only the first few measures, but it was just like Robbie Krieger played in the opening to Spanish Caravan. Well, that's what I want to play, I thought. As you might have guessed, I lost interest in lessons and decided I'd be better off teaching myself. Like most important life lessons, the connection between Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Asturias was not clear until much later. Back in 2014, I attended Joe Satriani's first ever G4 experience. It featured performances and classes by Joe, as well as Paul Gilbert, Andy Timmons, and a bunch of other world-class players. Joe covered a lot of material, but what stood out to me was this. Learn the note names all over the fretboard. What? Surely he was kidding. Rock and roll is all about feel. Why should I learn the note names? But then Andy Timmons taught a class, inviting students to improvise over a simple chord progression using only chord tones. Surely he was only trying to appeal to a room full of students of varying skill levels. But then, Bruce Bouillet, who played opposite of Paul Gilbert in Racer X, taught a class about learning basic triads all over the neck. Triads? What? That is so boring. While I learned a lot at G4, I was certain these simple concepts were meant for the less experienced players in the bunch, not for me. In the years that followed, I kept trying to incorporate the lessons I learned at G4 into my everyday playing, but it was only about two years ago that it finally clicked. I finally understood why Mr. Russo wanted me to start with such simple music. If you can't play a simple melody with each note ringing out clearly, in time and in tune, how can you possibly expect to play more complicated music? Sure, some players manage to skip over the basics and they become amazing, but they are the exception not the rule. It's completely unrealistic to think that you say your name to yourself is that one in a million genius who gets to skip to the front of the line. You need to be honest with yourself. Instead of focusing on lessons, books, and videos for intermediate or advanced players, you might want to consider something a little more basic, like playing simple melodies until they sound perfect, working on your timing with a metronome, and yeah, learning the note names all over the fretboard. Because it's never too late to learn the basics, but the longer you wait, the harder it is to shake off those bad habits that have been holding you back. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, peace.